sweeping a back-to-back -back in New York and Toronto. The Warriors have opened a grueling six-game road trip, 3-0, vamping to an association's second-best 13-3 since January 30th. That said, hampering the flow on Friday morning, the Warriors' flight getting delayed until 5 a.m. in New York due to a mechanical issue with their plane, delayed takeoff until 5 a.m. After finally going through customs at 6 a.m., a Dubs team missing both Wiggins and Pajemski, while having been up all night in the evening prior, persevered to continue their problematic dissection of the association. With 23 left in the 82-game grind, Golden State's 8th easiest schedule remaining gives them a legit shot to be a top 4-5 to five seed in the West, which after a roller coaster start, would be as ideal as it gets. Full film evaluation of the Dubs domination in Manhattan in the 6 is on its way, but just 11.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't yet, hit the sub box. Opening a six-game late-season East Coast road trip with wins in Washington, New York, and Toronto. Post-game against the Knicks, Curry mentioned regarding the state of his team that the Warriors are building an identity based around consistency. In the 2023-24 campaign, especially as of late where they've won eight straight games away from Chase, said consistency has been most prevalent on the road. On their longest road winning streak in five years, the Warriors are the best team away from home since February 5th. Make sure you keep it here for the most recent matchup with the Raptors that you can't miss, but let's open with the first of a doubleheader against the Knicks. The Warriors open with a floppy action, with Steph curling off first a Brandon Cross and secondly a Jonathan Flair to receive a Draymond swing and knock it down. A kick and relocate set sees Curry kick to Green, relocate with the assistance of a Kaminga cross screen, and on the catch from Green, pump fake to get Hart flying by, leaving him wide for some cash. Golden State's defense behind Draymond Green's high IQ backside presence clamped down. Meanwhile, Curry and Kaminga lit it up offensively, ultimately combining for 56 points. For the first 5 minutes and 26 seconds specifically, the dubs held the, to be fair, very injured Knicks scoreless. This Hogwarts bred Kerr playset features Green ghosting an on-ball for Paul, then ranging to the right wing to set a flare for Curry, who then receives a swing pass from Paul before getting downhill for the N1. Aggressive and reactionary perimeter defense from Moses Moody was a massive storyline against the Knicks, as defensively, Moody was a versatile stopper with excellent energy and lateral movement ranging from the wing to the backcourt. Like Moody, Kaminga was also helping keep New York's top player in check. Following a Jalen flop, Jonathan would hit Brunson with a too small celly. Kaminga would again seemingly sun Brunson by sticking with him on the perimeter, then shuffling over to pull off a monster rejection. Kaminga says no. Kaminga's improved ambidextrousness is displayed on this possession. Initially rejected, he stays with it by calmly gathering his own miss, up faking right, then confidently attacking left and finishing with that offhand fluidly around Achua. Achua would not long after get switched onto Curry and be hit with a quick twitch step back. Very next defensive possession, you see Draymond rotating onto DiVincenzo on the back side before Kaminga gets his hand in the passing lane and swipes away Dante's kick out to McBride. This would trigger a ridiculous fast break where Green outlets the JK who tip passes to Bajemski who bounces back to set up JK on the runway. Pods would suffer a knee injury at some point, which Kerr says isn't serious, but to help seal it, Brandon found a seam to the basket with the Knicks leaving him wide open. Draymond would spot him for the off-balance finish plus the foul, and you have to love this vibe-enhancing green curry celly filled with aura right afterwards. What legitimately closed it out in Manhattan was firstly this CP off-ball screen for Steph to free up Curry in the right corner for the Draymond swing and burying. Secondly, a split action with Paul facilitating from the post and Draymond cross-screening for Steph, leading to another triple. Thirdly, Curry shows us his screen-setting ability by pinning two Knicks, freeing up a clear lane for Draymond to the rim. When it was all said and done, the dubs cruised to an 11-point W.
after a delayed flight, forcing them to stay up all night. Moving on to the Raps matchup on the second night of a back-to-back -back up north. Moody would kick off the scoring by catching a kick out from Kaminga and draining a heavily contested by quickly three-pointer. Moses would continue to cook by making a fast break layup through two defenders, then pulling up from the mid-range, accounting for Golden State's first seven points. However, sloppiness ensued with three Warrior turnovers committed in the first four minutes, and the Raptors jumped out to an 11-7 advantage. Just in time, a Kerr timeout was followed by a jumper from the nine-time champ, and we need to see more of that stroke from the NBA's all-time leader in three-point percentage. That said, Stephen Douglas would only two possessions after that, following his team failing to execute a well-drawn-up play and then giving up an open three-pointer to make it 14-7, call another timeout, but this time proceed to rage at his team for a lapse in focus. The chef was feasting in the opening frame up north, as the off-ball route that he takes around this young glove screen gives him enough room for the catch and release. An isolation then features this stop on a dime moving jab to catch Trent Jr. leaning, and Steph's seamless shooting structure makes shots with this type of space resemble two feet layups. The curry flurry would continue, with Stefan finding Draymond out of an early offense high pick and roll. Steph would then create an eighth consecutive point by using a Chris on ball, then stepping back into a Kavon on ball for another triple. For JK, 13 of Kaminga's 24 were scored in the second quarter, and one of his buckets in this frame was a top dunk of the year for him. Kaminga! He just created an international incident dunking over Pertle there. They wanted a foul too. Kaminga would keep attacking the Raptors' interior D by getting a first step as either a ball handler or a roller to either finesse or beast home bunnies. Near the opening of the third frame, Moses Moody's Paul Pierce-esque body control for his size allows him to glide through the air pass quickly for a smooth fast break hoop. From smooth to straight jaw dropping, and Curry responds to this pick and roll trap by Pirtle and Trent Jr by splitting a pass through them to the roller and Jonathan, leading to this. Kaminga scoring! Oh man! The, the rim, the whole goal is still shaking. That somehow even topped JK's dunk from earlier. This man Kaminga's beastly hops are out of this world entertaining. A wizard-like down the stretch sequence from a 36-year-old on the second night of a back-to-back -back would then ensue, as Steph would hit a triple off a pass from Draymond, then off the dribble, use a TJD screen to perfection with an in and out. For a 38-year-old in CP3 who was outstanding off of the bench, he would also utilize a TJD screen to get to the baseline for a heavily bothered fader that he drains. This former dub's arch nemesis, Chris Paul, has become the Warriors' greatest ally when they've needed him most, given they're without both Pojemski and Wiggins. The CP3 TJD PNR connection is a tandem that Dub Nation's been a big fan of. This Paul Jackson Davis 1 2 punch was showcased right here. Davis pins Carton, and right as Paul gets the trap coverage, instantly overhead bullets to Davis, forcing Chris Boucher to make a business decision off this Looney Tunes DHO. Kaminga would get downhill for a tough fall away over Brown in traffic. Then, it was CP isolating Pirtle with a cross-tween, cross hezzy cross, cross combo into a pull-up midi. Savvy combo again right here, this time from Lester, as Quinones dices up Carton with a momentum, hezzy, and spin to beautifully create a bucket. It was tough in the early going, but the Warriors' playbook, Hall of Fame execution, and depth became overwhelming for Toronto as the game progressed, allowing the Dubs to take revenge for their loss in January to the Raptors, Curry's first game in the North since 2019, and only his second game since 2016, featured an end-of-game meeting with a fellow GOAT being the greatest mixed martial artist ever in Habib Nurmagomedov, shout out to a legend in the Eagle. Jonathan Kaminga broke out into a star earlier in the year, however, with astounding in-season development, JK could very well be making the jump into a superstar. The plays Kaminga's making and production he's posting, most importantly on a consistent basis, is so damn impressive to me. Not just that, but in general, 
Kaminga's aura in terms of his aggressiveness to destroy opponents between the lines, while being able to flip a switch to easygoingness off of it, resembles a superstar talent. I mean, take it from Draymond, who gave credit to the Warriors' recent tearing a part of the association to Jonathan himself by stating post-game against New York, I think we're winning because of the growth of Jonathan Kaminga. Green's remarks were followed by Paul stating post-game the next night, early in the season, I bet JK probably hated us because we were on him all the time, but it's because we see so much in him. From Chris, but more so from a man around Kaminga's stature in Draymond who's been teammates with him for three years, the veteran mentorship Kaminga's gotten, including with Igudala before his retirement, I want Iguodala. has been the driving factor to his maturity as both a person and player within the NBA landscape. As I mentioned in the intro, the Warriors are 13-3 since January 30th with this win in Toronto, the second best record among all 30 teams since then. However, the next squad on Golden State's schedule is the bunch with the number one record since January 30th, being the Boston Celtics. The Warriors sit three games back of the number five seed and six and a half games back of the number four seed, with plenty of time left to make a run. It's a clash of the hottest teams across the association, so what's your prediction for the Celtics Warriors matchup on Sunday? Best answer gets next video shout out. Today's shout out goes to D Pitzel, who says, if these Warriors can stay healthy and keep the right energy, they got just as good of a shot at a title as anyone. The experience and confidence they've distributed between their starters and bench should be having other teams praying they don't meet in the playoffs. Thank you for watching, this was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.